I started experimenting with Midjourney a couple of weeks ago. It was a lot of fun seeing the images the AI would come up with. It wouldn't always make the best decisions and the images weren't always the best, but overall it's exciting to see this new field developing right before our eyes. So with this video I wanted to explore Midjourney a little bit more, to see how much of an input I can have in the final image. In my previous tests I relied heavily on the random decisions of the AI, that's of course part of the charm of this type of image creation, but in order for AI tools to become more useful to artists, we have to have some way of steering things to a specific direction. So with that in mind, I started experimenting with prompts and prompt settings in order to try and get closer to what I had in mind. Did I succeed? Let's find out. The first thing I wanted to try out was the image weight command. It was suggested in the comments of the previous video and after reading the manual I figured out how to use the correct syntax. So what does this command do? We can point the AI to a specific image on the internet and tell it to use that as a visual inspiration. But as the manual says, we're not really building on top of that image, it's just used as a general reference. I decided to use one of my own 3D renders as the base. I wanted to see how the AI would interpret this robot in a cyberpunk manner, so my text prompt reflected that. But even though the image weight was set quite high in order to influence the outcome as much as possible, the results I got back were not what I had in mind. The main reason I was disappointed by the results has to do with the fact that the AI images don't really have any similarities to the base image. I do see the use of a similar color palette, but other than that there's not much else. For example, I would have liked to see the same 3 quarter angle or some more unique characteristics of the form, like the multiple wires on the robot. Instead we get a more bland and uninteresting image. First off, it's a frontal view, which is not the most exciting angle. The AI did try to copy some other elements, but it's nothing to write home about. For example, the AI robots do have similar blocky features as the original robot. There's also an attempt to use screws in some parts of the head. But yeah, overall the AI images aren't really close to the original. To see if I could influence that a little bit better, I tried an even stronger weight. Before the image weight was set to around 70% and now it's all the way up to 90. And in order to steer the overall style a little bit closer to what I had in mind, I also used Hajime Sorayama as the style to copy. Sorayama is extremely well known for his shiny robot characters and there's a ton of images of his work on the internet, so I knew that the AI would not have a problem finding references. <laughs> Unfortunately, the results weren't that great. These are definitely not Sorayama robots. And on top of that, they don't even look close to my image. I wasn't sure why that was happening and initially I thought that I might have confused the AI. On one hand, I was using the image weight command and was asking to use my image as a reference. And at the same time, I was asking the AI to copy the style of Sorayama. So it might have been a user error. As a last ditch effort, I decided to adjust the prompt a little bit more and I only focused on delivering a robot character in the style of Sorayama. Unfortunately, <laughs> the AI had other plans. What I got back was more of a depressed Sorayama. The robots were suddenly not shiny, they weren't vibrant, and they were way too human-like. These looked more like a Soviet artist interpretation of a robot rather than a Surayama robot. Just as a reminder, this is Surayama. Super shiny surfaces, dynamic forms, and characters that have anthropomorphic features but are clearly robotic. And this is the AI result. There's quite a bit of difference there. So yeah, my first attempt at controlling the AI wasn't going as planned. Just to make sure that my prompt wasn't throwing things off, I took out the word realistic, just to make sure that this word wasn't the reason I was getting more human features in there. But that word was certainly not the issue. <laughs> the results I got back were even worse than the ones before. But I guess that's to be expected. The more descriptive we are, the more guidance the AI has. The less information it has, the more stuff it has to come up with. But there's always this fine line we need to toe. If there's a ton of descriptors, the AI might get confused. 
if there's too few, a lot of things will be left to chance. After this huge fail, I decided to just experiment with the AI in a more loose way, just to see where things would take me. I used more basic and vague descriptors in my prompts, and the results were certainly much better. I think there's two reasons for that. First off, I think by keeping things loose and vague, the AI has more room to play. But most importantly, I think it also has to do with the user's expectations. In my previous attempt, I had a very specific image in mind, and I was trying to get as close to that as possible. But by coming into it without a specific outcome in mind, you're more willing to accept whatever image the AI will come up with. The manual says that if you're looking for something specific, you should try to be as descriptive as possible. But I believe that for me at least, the looser approach works much better. And as the team says in the manual, using strong feelings or mystical sounding themes can work great. For example, using prompts like sense of awe or the will to endure. And that's what I was finding as well. Whatever the case may be though, these AI assisted images are still a great starting point for an artwork. Whenever I get an image back from the AI, I can see the potential. It's immediately obvious to me how the image could be improved by getting rid of some bits, modeling some others a little bit better, adjusting the lighting and composition. The skeleton of a great image is there, it just needs some refinement and extra love. And that's the amazing thing if you think about it. We essentially have a storyboard artist at our fingertips that can spit out images in a really short amount of time. Are they work of arts on their own? No, but they can be after some heavy editing. I still though wanted to explore a little bit more the different styles the AI could output, just to see how well Midjourney could imitate things. And to do that, I used artists I'm already familiar with. Gregory Crudson, Jeff Koons, Simon Salenhag, and a couple of others. The results were surprising. I first started with Gregory Crudson. I have a whole video about this artist, but in case you're not familiar with his work, he's a photographer shooting very cinematic and dreamlike pictures. His images are mostly shot in suburbia and require a ton of pre and post work. It's not the easiest style to copy, but I was hopeful that the AI could manage to output something interesting. And I must say I was quite impressed when I got back the results from the first prompt. Of course, it's nowhere near a final state, but what I'm interested in is a first rough sketch, something to get the creative flow going. And this one has all the elements of a good sketch. The overall mood is spot on, the suburban setting is correct, and the color palette is in the right range. Everything feels to the point. Since I was successful with this one, I decided to play a little bit more with prompts using Gregory Crudson as the base style, and the results were equally good. As we've seen with the previous video, the AI has some issues with the human form, and you can barely tell that the man is supposed to be floating in midair, but still, as a sketch, it's perfect. It conveys the style and mood pretty well. I then tried another favorite artist of mine, Simon Stalenhag. I'm sure most of you know him already, but in case you're not, he's a painter slash illustrator, usually drawing jaw-dropping futuristic wastelands. Suburbia is also heavily featured in his work, and his images are as cinematic as Crudson's, even though he's using traditional media to do that. The AI results were quite good. Disregarding how some things look, for example the design of the robot, I really like a lot of the elements in the picture. The composition is quite strong, the color palette is very reminiscent of Stalenhag's work, and the overall mood is spot on. The AI keeps doing some of the weird things I've seen it do before, but it doesn't matter, there's a good base there. For example, the robots are made out of houses, even though I didn't really ask for that. Or what I assume is streetlights are just floating in space. But yeah, these things can easily be redefined when working on the final artwork. So with that first attempt being a success, I had to try some more prompts with Stalenhag as the style base. The usual AI errors are there, like things being in the wrong place, but the AI images feel like a nice starting point for an artist-driven artwork. I then tried several different artists with differing levels of success. Copying David Hockney was kinda semi-successful. 
The color palette is kinda there, and the human forms, while not really Hockney like they feel like a very distant cousin of his. <laughs> so the AI gets a pass for this one. Trying to imitate Jeff Koons, on the other hand, was a huge failure. <laughs> Mostly because the AI couldn't imitate the shiny look of Koons' famous dog sculptures, and also because the AI doesn't seem to know how a dinosaur looks like. It's a common occurrence with Midjourney. There are things that it just cannot figure out how to draw. In order to help things, I decided to be more specific, so instead of dinosaur, I used the word T-Rex. But things didn't really improve. The T-Rex looked more like a child's interpretation of a T-Rex. Imitating Geiger, though, was a bit more successful. The forms still don't look like dinosaurs, and the images don't really use the shapes Geiger used in his work, but it's an interesting set of images to look at. And as I've mentioned multiple times before, they're good enough as a starting point. Finally, I tried to see how well the AI would do with William Eggleston. He's a photographer known for his uh, slice of life, banal type of images. He has a very distinct style in his colors and his compositions, and he's one of my favorite photographers. I used two of his images as a base, but I did not use the image weight command. I just tried to describe the images and see what the AI would come up with. The framing on both of Eggleston's images is very creative, and I'm sure it's something we won't see from the AI. Medjourney's framing is not as adventurous. So here's how Midjourney interpreted the images. Even though they look nothing like Eggleston's photographs, they do have some nice properties. I think if I was a bit more descriptive, the results might have been better, but I don't think we would ever get as close to the real photos. Either way, it's interesting to see how AI deals with the subject matter. Descriptors like hard shadows and sunlight really help with the style of the image, so always keep that at the back of your head when you're creating yours. These are really nice descriptors to use, of course, if it fits what you're going for. It's also hilarious to see the AI struggling with simple things like how a bicycle looks like, or seeing the nondescript contents of the plate on the dinner table. I'm sure if I redo these images in a couple of months, the results will probably be 10 times better. From what I understand, the AI is still being trained, so probably we will soon get to see some jaw-dropping results. Even though I didn't manage to control the output of the AI, I feel that I did get some better understanding of how things work. But my opinion hasn't changed since the last video. I still think that it's a really awesome tool for sketching out ideas. I'm planning to create some artwork based on these AI designs, so keep an eye for that video. Hopefully it's gonna be sooner rather than later. But what do you think of the results? Were you pleasantly surprised or were horrified by the images? Let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.